Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light. What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I am your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C45 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the community relations manager at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we're joined by Rebecca Torres, the founder and executive director of Backbones. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Well, I'm excited for you to be here today and to dive into your awesomeness and everything that you're doing in the community with Backbone. So let's, let's just do that. Um, tell us a little bit more about yourself and your paralysis journey. Uh, yeah, my name is Rebecca Torres and I am in the Chicago land area. Um, I am a person with a spinal cord injury injured at the age of 13. Um, I was a teenager, um, a car accident on a family vacation, um, C5 through seven injury. So paralysis from the chest down. Um, I've been using a power chair now for 20 something years, um, almost 30 and, years. And then what, when did you co-found Backbones and tell us a little bit about kind of what motivated you to do that? Yeah, the organization Backbones was um, started in 2009, um, and it was sort of an effort between me and my sister, my two sisters and a friend, um, after we had done some fundraising for um, like medical costs for me, um, we just sort of rallied a lot of our community together and we saw that like all these positive things were happening. And at the same time, I um, I was connecting with other people with spinal cord injuries and realizing how much of like how much isolation there was and how much I, how many people had experienced something similar that I had where you know after I went home from rehab um, I felt very like alone and I didn't have a lot of resources and um, like reality just hits right when you go home because you're in your your safe environment, your home, but it's completely different. And um, and that sort of like w was one of the things that that I thought, you know, if, if there's more connection, more support, more resources, and that motivated me to start Backbones and to be able to provide um, peer support for people. And then eventually, you know, a whole other bunch of programs that we're offering now for people. Can you dive a little bit deeper into kind of but why community and and why connecting with community kind of is so important after a catastrophic injury and how it kind of gives gives the those with those catastrophic injuries kind of a better fighting chance. Yeah, I think community is really like a lifeline, honestly, um, and and connecting with people. Um, we can often feel isolated, and this goes for people with spinal cord injuries or anything, right? Like. You often see like new moms start mommy groups or like, you know, people that go to AA or people that um, are just needing to find someone that they can relate to and talk to. And I think that's um, it's so important. And I think it, it um, not only helps your mental health, but also, you know, your physical health. Right. You 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 meet people, you ask questions, you find out answers that no one else can give you. Sometimes not even doctors or therapists can can give you if um, if you don't have that peer support and you can ask those questions. And I often feel like it's uh, finding community is like a sigh of relief for people, where it's like, oh, like I wish I wish I had this, you know. And it, it, like before, I, I I really love it when newly injured people um, seek out community right away because I feel like they're just like 10 steps ahead. And I think a lot of us takes us a few years to be like, okay, I need this. Community truly does make it so that you're not alone. You don't fall through the cracks and that you can get in the right direction that much quicker. 
I know if like, if you have to do it all alone, then you know, for us, reinvent the wheel, there's, there's so many mistakes that are going to be made or different directions that you shouldn't have gone in. And if like, you can learn from others, it's like, wow, you're, you get, you get to where you need to go that much faster. And also just, it's just, I know for me, whenever I have somebody else in the, in our community doing something that I'm not doing, it's like, kind of kicks me in the butt, you know, like I can do that too. Let's yeah. try that. Let's, well, let's not try that, you know, just learning from each other. There's always value in that. And uh, that's, yeah, that's honestly like a motivator uh, for when I started Backbones too. Cause like I didn't have peer support until I went to college and I started meeting other people with spinal cord injuries. And I was like, Oh, cool. Like they, they learned how to use a camera or like, that guy can open a beer or that person's like dating someone and, and that one's traveling. And I, it was a lot of things that were new to me that I was like, I can do all those things. And um, we were prior to that. I thought I couldn't. And art has been, uh, been a, a special part of your life, both before and after your injury. What is it about art that is open to all abilities? It's a form of self-expression um, and you don't have to, you don't have to, it doesn't have to look a certain way, right? And, um, or be a certain way or be a certain medium. And I think, um, you know, often people think like, oh, I'm not an artist or I, I could never do that. But it's not about that. A lot of times it's about, you know, what, what you can do to sort of share sometimes with things that you can't share in other ways and that might be you know if you want to like journal or if you want to paint or if you want to make music or dance and like even if we're not physically able to to do some of these things there's still ways to do them um can you tell us a little bit more about your art journey because i know you are very talented and uh and if you will I want people to go see where where they can learn more about backbones, learn more about your art. But like, you are you are very good. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think I've been um, creative always since I was a kid. Um, and after my injury, you know, one of the first things, you know, they always ask you like, what are your goals? And that was one of my goals to be able to draw again. And um, I started learning how to draw, use a pencil, and using different splints. Um, and adaptive equipment and eventually I learned how to how to you know do stuff without splints or with different equipment that I needed but um, I do painting illustration um, I went to school for fashion design and for theater so I do have a background in costume design I did that for a while before starting Backbones I was designing costumes for uh, dance and theater um, and then when I started back once, I sort of put everything um, on the back burner for a little bit because starting a nonprofit is really time consuming and I had zero background, like all my background was in art. Um, and, um, you know, I think in 2014 was just like a moment where I was like, I really miss art and I'm not doing any art and I have to get back into it. And um, I went to a residency that was actually funded by the Craig Nielsen Foundation um, for people with spinal cord injuries. And that sort of kicked me in the butt. And I was like, like, it just started this fire again, where I was like, I can, um, I can make art and I can use art to, um, for change. And it was way, like, I started, I used to keep like my disability advocacy and my art sort of separate. Like it had to be either one or the other. But eventually I started using art as like ways to, to sort of talk about issues that I wanted to talk about. Um, I've done several exhibitions about, um, for Backbones and also for personal, for personal stuff, but like a photography exhibit for Backbones where we, that toured, it was called Reinventing the Wheel, just how you just said earlier, Reinventing the Wheel. Um, and it, it highlighted people with spinal cord injuries from around the country um, that toured for, to a couple places around the country and then um, yeah, I've, I've just worked on other exhibitions with, um, this like disability lens and voice that, um, I think is important. There's a lot of artists with disabilities that, um, 
are creating some really good work and are not often like supported or highlighted. What, what advice would you give to a young aspiring artist with a disability that hasn't really dove in deep yet, but, but is, is interested too? My biggest advice would probably be to like, try and minimize the self-doubt and go ahead and call yourself an artist or go ahead and call yourself a filmmaker or a dancer, whatever that is, like call yourself that and own it and then like create your own path. I think the biggest thing I've learned so far is that like I was trying to fit in to these these uh, paths of being an artist or being a filmmaker or being whatever it, it is. And it's hard because we have disabilities. We don't fit those paths, right? And so make your own. Like, that's just, we have to. Make your own. I love it. Yeah. And what, what first comes to mind when you hear the word accessibility? I think accessibility means opening up the world and freedom for people, independence. That's what it means to me. But when I think that, when it first comes to mind, I also think of people that think accessibility as like a barrier too, where like, in terms of like companies and stuff and institutions, sometimes they, that word is scary to people and what it means to be accessible. And if everyone can do a, one more thing to make the world more accessible, inclusive, what do you think that could be? Um, Ask questions and listen, and then do your best to uh, to do that thing. Um, and it can be little or it can be big, but it starts with that question: like, how can I, how can I be more more welcoming to you in this space, whatever the space is? We don't know what we don't know, and the more we can ask, the more we can learn. I love that. The better. Yeah. And. Um, if you, when it comes to kind of the business world and the gaps within the, uh, access and inclusion, um, what do you what do you think are some of those biggest gaps? Well, I think with inclusion, um, often disabilities is still getting left behind, and I think conversations like this are um, are really important because they're helping people understand that this is a segment of the world's population that we exist and we um, intersect with every identity that you know it, we need to have more inclusive spaces but i think um you know the, that's a big gap right that we're just not talking about it and it needs to more conversations need to happen until access becomes a culture a way of life and like normalized Oh, I love that, the, the culture and it's, you know, every business has its own culture, its own way of, of conducting itself. And the more and more you can listen, the more you can learn, the more you can talk about disability, accessibility and everything else, uh, you know, about, about in including people. It's just the, the business grows and evolves and creates an atmosphere. Um, and become a value, like if you can have access be a core value, how amazing would that be? I think that's all businesses should strive for that. And it, bring, it brings value to its employees and its customers when it does that. Yeah. Um, and what do you wish uh, brands and businesses did more of regarding um, accessibility and inclusion? I would love to see brands and businesses um, think about their products, their services, and how, how they can be more accessed by people with different abilities and different backgrounds. Um, and, you know, that can go in many different ways, right? It could go in like what kind of language you're putting out there on your website, on your brochures. Um, it could be your packaging is my packaging accessible to people or your product, you know, or like your whatever product it is. Um, but I think there's so many levels of, like you said earlier, you, if you could do one thing, um, you know, everyone can do 
one thing over time, you know, things improve. Um, but yeah, I think just keeping, keeping that in mind, like how, how they can be more accessible. Rebecca, thank you so much for your time today. Being our guest on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, just I uh, really enjoyed the conversation and everything, everything that you do for the community. Thank you, I appreciate it. And to all of our guests, thank you so much for staying to the end of Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us at Accessibility underscore community. And as always, thank you for being on this journey with us. Bye everyone, bye Rebecca. Bye. Thank you.